The rewind spring pulls the starter rope back into the starter when starting the engine. After years of use, the rewind spring will wear and eventually break. The spring will typically break at one of its ends, where it attaches to the pulley or to the housing. This wear can be accelerated by using excessive force when pulling the starter rope, or if the rope is routinely pulled out to its full length. When the rewind spring breaks, it won't retract the rope back into the starter. Replacing the rewind spring is a repair that you can do yourself, and I'm going to show you Hi, I'm Mark Soja. Do-it-yourself repairs like these are easier than you might think. From lawn machines to cordless drills, kitchen mixers, outdoor grills, our how-to videos walk you through each repair from start to finish. So doing it yourself means never having to do it alone. Let's get started. I'll begin by removing the clutch cover and upper shaft assembly from the trimmer. Next, I'll loosen the clamp screw that secures the upper shaft to the housing. And remove the screw that prevents the shaft from pivoting. I'll also remove the pivot screw from the trigger assembly. And I'll loosen the remaining screws on the trigger assembly. With all of the hardware either loosened or removed, now I can pull the shaft out, releasing the shaft from the clutch assembly. Now I have access to the clutch drum and I can remove it. With the clutch drum out of the way, I have access to the clutch. I'll use a wrench to remove it. The problem is when I try to unscrew the clutch from the shaft, it just rotates the engine over. So I need to do something to bind up the cylinder so the shaft won't spin. I'll start by removing the spark plug. I'll remove the spark plug boot and then the spark plug. Now I'll take a short piece of starter rope and insert it into the cylinder. The rope will take up the space between the piston and the top of the combustion chamber. When I rotate the shaft over, the piston will be bound and I can remove the clutch. I'll leave enough of the rope sticking out so I can easily remove it later. And now I can remove the clutch. Next I'll remove the rear motor housing. And now I can remove the starter housing. Now I have access to the starter assembly. The next step is to remove the tension from the spring. To do that, I'll remove the starter handle from the rope. And I'll let the rope recoil back into the starter. Now I'll remove the retaining plate. To remove the starter pulley, we'll need to cut the retaining ring. This ring will need to be replaced during reassembly. Now I can remove the starter pulley. And now I can remove the starter spring assembly. And I'll install the new starter spring. I align the tab with the opening in the housing.
Now I'll remove the starter rope from the pulley. Now I can reinstall the pulley. I'll align the notch on the back of the pulley with the tab on the spring. And I'll secure the starter pulley with a retaining ring. Now I'll tension the starter spring. I'll rotate the pulley clockwise. Probably about five full turns. Then I'll line the opening in the pulley for the rope with the eyelet on the starter housing. I'll insert the rope through both the eyelet and the hole in the pulley. Then I'll use my pliers to pull the rope up through the edge of the pulley. I'll tie off a knot on the end of the rope and then pull the knot back into the opening on the starter pulley. I'll tie a temporary knot in the rope so that it doesn't retract back into the starter and I'll reattach the starter handle. Then I can untie the temporary knot and allow the rope to retract back into the starter. Now I'll reinstall the retainer. and I can reinstall the starter housing. Next I'll reinstall the rear engine cover. Now I can reinstall the clutch. I'll place the large washer over the spindle and then thread the clutch in place. And I'll tighten it up. Now I'll remove the rope from the cylinder and reinstall the spark plug. Now I'll reinstall the clutch drum. I'll reinstall the clutch housing and the upper shaft and handle. I'll line the shaft anti-rotation holes with the openings in the housings and secure the shaft with the screws.
Now tighten up the rest of the handle hardware and secure the clutch housing to the engine. And that's how you can replace the recoil spring on your small engine. Be sure to check back often for new videos and expert advice. If you found this video helpful, give us a thumbs up.